I'm from uh, Lusaka, Zambia. I work uh, for PATH, uh, it's a global health NGO, uh, and I'm uh, mainly supporting um, uh, M&D activities uh, in Zambia, and I've been doing this now for uh, more than 15 years now. And uh, part of that has been uh, supporting the activities of uh, DHIS2 in Zambia. Um, my first experience with DHIS2 is uh, in 2009. Uh, of course, we we're looking for an open source tool to help uh, the Ministry of Health uh, understand the disease burden in our facilities, in our communities. Before that, uh, it was not uncommon to uh, see uh, people using paper tools just to understand the disease burden and related to anti-malaria is used for uh, managing the, <clears throat> uh, the malaria. Uh, so in 2009, uh, we, we started off um, looking at these tools and also, as you know, in, in that year, we had the advent of uh, internet. So it made even reporting from remote places a possibility. We have one of those who first started testing uh, DHIS2 in Zambia, uh, in one of the uh, districts. So we had a simple uh, data set, a few uh, data elements, uh, link them up, and then, uh, well, we had some help from uh, Best of Oslo, somebody who helped us to develop the database itself. And uh, we had a few reports, and it was exciting to see reports coming in from uh, some few hundred kilometers and understanding a uh, malaria uh, outbreak out there. And so it started from there, we started scaling up at, first of all, at facility level. And then uh, eventually, after a couple of years, we started understanding the burden from the communities. Now, at that stage, uh, our effort as a project was mainly to support the efforts uh, towards what we're calling now malaria elimination. We had the national health information system going on, which was also largely paper-based. But after some time, seeing the progress we are doing around the malaria project, even the national HMIS started adopting the HIS2 uh, for, for reporting. Uh, so we've moved on on using the HIS2 for aggregate uh, data uh, management uh, for malaria. They say that facilities in community levels and in the recent past, uh, we have a number of uh, use cases uh, for tracking uh, cases of malaria, what we're calling case investigation. And uh, as of last year, we had a, a large-scale implementation of uh, um, distribution of uh, uh, insect nets in the country. Actually, it's bigger than the one we had from South Sudan. In our case in Zambia, we are distributing about 11 million nets. Um, using more than 5,000 devices. Um, before we implemented this last year, we were using a paper-based system coupled with a little bit of uh, some Excel and so on. There was definitely a very big problem between the nets uh, provided by various partners and actually seeing who benefited from uh, the net campaign. And with the use of DHIS2, uh, we can actually see that we are very close to and the projections and what went out to be distributed and also reports coming out there. We have several visualizations which have come out in DHIS2, the dashboards and so on, which are showing us who the target beneficiaries are for the next campaign. Yeah, it was a very interesting uh, case. Um, and uh, so far, the results are showing that DHIS2 really helped improve, uh, especially uh, for the net distribution. And as of now, um, a lot of uh, people are appreciating that we've moved from paper-based systems into HIS2. Last year, we did a, a qualitative study on uh, visualizations coming out from the uh, various platforms, and one of them, DHIS2. How are people using DHIS2 to, to understand decision-making? So we're able to see from uh, this, at national level, district level, how they've been able to use these tools to visualize the data and manage the various processes in the country. It's also improved, um, I think, um, service delivery and also, I think, um, accountability uh, in terms of logistics and also those who bring in money and they would like to understand how their money is being used to support 
reporting and other things. We have uh, more than like uh, a thousand uh, people reporting DHIS2. And in our system, we provide an incentive uh, for those who are reporting at facility and community level uh, every month and every week. Now, that's quite a little bit of money. An example would be a budget close to $50,000 every year going towards uh, the support uh, for those who are reporting. And obviously, if anyone is putting in money, they don't understand how that money is being used for reporting. So we've seen that these synergies are bringing in a lot more resources into supporting a number of these activities in the country.